Data suggests that people deprived of social interactions for even just a few weeks are 30 to 40% more likely to suffer from depression and suicide, suicidal ideation. While social distancing with virtual access to friends, family, and coworkers is hardly the same as extreme isolation, public health experts are worried about spikes in anxiety and depression during the pandemic feelings that will not automatically disappear when people go outside again. How can we more efficiently check in on our mental health during this unsettling time? How can we better educate ourselves to become more mindful to those who already suffer from mental illness? Knowledge is power. I have brought along with me guests, Christina, Moss Graber of Rochester, New York's National Alliance of Mental Illness, and former voice contestant Gary Carpentier of Oswego, New York. Today's theme is mindfulness. Welcome to season two, Afternoon Cocktail. I introduce to you, As We Go New York's Gary Carpentier. Yeah. Gary, how are you? How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you so much for being on a being a part of our first show of season two. It's very exciting. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I've been watching. I watched a lot of the first season, so I'm excited to be a part of it. I appreciate that so much. It's awesome. So, what are you going to sing for us? With the, what are you going to open up with? Yeah. So this song is. Um, uh, an original of mine. It's called Special Kind of Love. Uh, it's a little acoustic version of it. Um, it's off of my EP Lucid that came out in December. Uh, and then I won a Sammy Award in Syracuse for it for Best R&B Album. So this is right off of that. Awesome. Take it away. Yeah, thanks. Something different about your touch Makes me feel all kinds of things Puts my heart into a train I'm begging to be here while I can I give you every part of me My love, respect and honesty Cause baby you're not made for this world But I'ma show you what you deserve Cause you and I We got this back you and I, we got that special kind of love We can't deny, I've changed everything and more To be holding you at sunrise Put my heart in empty hands Overflow till I'm your man I'll give you every part of me my love, respect, and honesty Baby, you're not made for this world But I'ma show you what you deserve Cause you and I We got that special kind of love You and I We got that special kind of love We can't deny, oh baby Got me praying on my knees Oh, baby, please hear me I don't want to be without you Any more than I should What's the point of living without you? That special kind of love You and I We got that special kind of love We can't deny 
Gary, Gary Carpentier. Carpentier or Carpentier? Carpentier, you got it. Carpentier, okay. Carpentier. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was giving it a little like French twist there, you know. <laughs> awesome <Okay>. job. <laughs> Well, um, congratulations on all your success, Gary. I mean, and, and on your your most recent win with the Sammies. That's very exciting. Are you currently you're currently located in Syracuse, correct? Yes. Yep. My wife and I live over in uh, East Syracuse. Um, I'm originally from Oswego, and then we moved to Liverpool about four years ago. Um, but we just moved into a new place because, you know, um, just trying to save up some money so we can buy that dream house. So. Of course, aren't we all right? Yeah, right. So, um, okay, so let's let's talk about the voice a little bit. I mean, I, I know there's way more to your story than just that, but I think it's interesting because I, I've auditioned for the voice in the past and there's a number of steps that come along the process. And I think most people just think that, you know, when you audition, it's what they see on TV, you know, but there's a number of steps before that. Can you explain the process you had to go through a little bit? Yeah. So mine is a, it's a little bit of a, a weird process, but um, yeah, what people don't know is that there's about seven rounds of auditions you have to go through before the one that you see on TV. So it like blows people's minds. Um, I was, I had tried out for X factor. America's got talent, just something like that. Um, I made it really far through both of them. Then I got cut like the step before the TV audition. So I was like, I don't really know if I want to keep going this route. It was about four o'clock in the morning. I'm filling out the stuff for the voice and you can send in like a video submission. So I'm like, I don't really don't know if I want to do it. My wife's like, if you don't, you're going to regret it. And I was like, okay. So I sent it in and lo and behold, I think... 4 a.m. when I sent it in, about 2 p.m. the next day, I get a call from an uh, executive producer in L.A. that's like, hey, you're gonna, we're going to use this as your audition. You're going to go right to the callbacks. And I was like, okay, girl, shoot. That's crazy. <laughs> um, I, uh, I ended up going to New York City um, of like two months later uh, for a callback. Uh, it was out of there because they did an open call the day before, or two days before that. So it was out about 8,000 people. They narrowed it down to 200. Um, and out of that, I think out of the 200, they only took 10 of us, and I was one of them. Um, so incredible. Like, that's got to feel so good, like, just to even get to that top 10, right? Yeah, it does, but it's like, you don't know how many people are there, or how many are auditioning, or what they're looking for. Because at the end of the day, yes, it's a, it's a singing show, but it's also it's a reality TV show. So you're filling a cast, and it's... You know, it is what it is. Um, but then after that, they flew me out to Los Angeles for a weekend. Um, so it was to the top 200 in the country out of like their five open calls that they had. So I think at the end of the day, it was 130,000 people that auditioned nationwide. And then I made it to the top 100. Um, then I was out there for the entire month of June while we were doing the getting preparations for the blind auditions. Uh, they cut it down to 90 there. And then the week of the blind auditions, you, uh, yeah, there's, there's, uh, you know, the four teams, the 12 spots. So, you know, you gotta, it, it's crazy. You go, cause it, they keep it like a playlist. So they try to do like a guy doing country girl doing pop guy doing, you know, alternative girl doing like that kind of thing. So if the teams fill up before you get a chance to go, you just go home. But I was fortunate enough that I went through the whole process and, I really was the last one to make it, and I cried like a baby because I didn't know how many spots were left. If there even was a spot, like I didn't, I didn't know. So what you see on uh, YouTube and television was crazy. It was real, and I had no idea. And I'm, I'm really thankful because it's opened a lot of doors. It's been fun, but uh, yeah, it's kind of nuts. What was it like to work with Adam Levine? So you were on Team Adam. I mean, what's he like? And what's maybe like the most valuable um, lesson that you've taken from your experience with him? Sure. Um, working with Adam was a dream come true. Uh, I mean, I grew up listening to Maroon 5 and, you know, songs about Jane, that album, like, changed my life. So um, meeting him. album. Oh, so, so, so good. I love that album. Yeah, so good. Um, uh, he is genuinely the most down-to-earth uh, 
like musician uh, celebrity I think I've ever met. Um, just really, really uh, wholesome. Swore like the entire time, so it made you feel like you know you could have a conversation with like a brother type of thing. Um, I got to work with him, and then uh, uh, so during the battle rounds, you get a celebrity coach that gets to come in and help. We had uh, Joe Jonas from the Jonas Brothers. He came in too. So I got to work with both of them, and the biggest advice I got from both of them was, you know, we're doing it. I am a very self-deprecating uh, person, and I'm, I've, over the years, have gotten better at that. But one thing with them is, like, you know, I was making a lot of – I was getting down on myself because I couldn't hit some notes. They both looked me dead in their face and, like, you're here for a reason. Like, you don't realize that, you know – you're considered one of the best singers in America that's here right now. And then like, he's like, you just need to have more confidence. Like you need to own it and you need to own your craft. It doesn't matter if you sing wrong notes, great notes, like whatever, you need to hone in on that and own it. And that like really resonated with me. So I've been keeping that with me. And I think that's taken me to completely new heights musically. And as a person, I've become a lot more confident too. So uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's something that I, it took me a while to like wake up to. It's a big slap in the face. Like, Hey, you're considered to be really good. You should probably not think that you're a piece of crap all the time. So, <laughs> you know, I think we all need that slap in the face once in a while, no matter what you do, you know, like there's, there's points in our lives where we, we don't feel the most confident, you know? And, um, yeah, I'm glad that, I mean, especially coming off of the voice, I'm sure, um, the continued success makes you feeds a little bit more into that that confidence and hopefully it made it grow um what talk about like your preparation for you know like the songs that you were going to perform on the next episode like did you i mean were the hours grueling or did you have to do a lot of work on your own um i mean how often were you actually in the room with adam levine prepping Sure. Um, so obviously Adam and all the other coaches, they have, um, they have lives and they're, you know, they're out doing their own thing and their music and stuff. So, um, the times like we were on camera, they were pretty significant. Like we were there for at least, you know, 35, 45 minutes, somewhere in there, like working with them. Um, and then off screen, like we worked with them a little bit, but we also had um, a vocal coach that was, or two vocal coaches that were there helping out. Um, so we had, I mean, we were singing every day. We were doing voice lessons in them. I was getting voice lessons from somebody who could charge like $300 for an hour session for free every day for like three months straight. So like my voice kind of just, but I already had a pretty decent range, but then after that, like I'm hitting notes in my upper register without even having to like switch to falsetto without having to like strain for it. So it's been, it's been nuts. Um, but yeah, working with Adam, we got to, we got to work with him a good amount. Um, the preparation for songs though, that was super annoying. Uh, cause you were <laughs> doing your singing song every day for a month, <laughs> literally yeah. a month. And it's only, it's only 90 seconds, so it's like a condensed version of it. So you have to figure out how to, uh, you know, captivate an entire country and coaches in 90 seconds, how to use, like, you know, uh, crescendos and decrescendos, all that kind of stuff, uh, emotion. It's a lot to get into 90 seconds. Uh, and um, so that was a challenge. I never want to sing that song again. Uh <laughs> It just drilled it so much. Um, and then I think the toughest one for me was the battle song, battle round. We were doing um, Send My Love by Adele. And uh, I am not a female and I am not Adele. So that uh, we had to take it down a, a half step. My battle partner, Emily, is uh, she's a godsend. She's great. Um, we had a fun with it, though. And that's the cool thing is you're making connections like my team members there's 12 of us. We hung out every single day. You're living, eating with these people. Like you're doing laundry with them. You're shopping with them. Like it's I, I, a lot of them came to my wedding. So, um, it, it's awesome. You form like a brotherhood and, uh, yeah, that song was tough though. Cause we, I got really down on myself, but she like picked me up and we had one of the best ones there in my opinion, but because of, you know, TV, it got cut down. We got montaged. So they only showed like a, like a, five second clip and then showed who won and I lost. So I was just like, Oh no, but 
it was it was fun. It was it was it, the preparation for it is a lot, but it it um it's definitely something that's helped me. Like when I get ready to do shows now, uh, I have a whole like new warm up that I do and just stuff that I can do every day to progress myself. So. So awesome. I mean, what a what a special experience to share with with a bunch of hopefuls, you know, like you're all there. You all obviously are competing, but you're you're all there with, you know, the same dream and ambitions. Right. Like everybody wants I mean, nobody wants to go home with a loss. But, you know, like that experience, it, it seemed I'm glad you were able to collect a bunch of, you know, really positive things to take home with you and, and to still carry with you today. So you keep in touch with most of the contestants still? Yeah. Yeah. So I have, um, I mean, we, we all exchanged numbers like within the first six minutes of everybody meeting. So um, I even have some numbers in my phone from people that I met in the audition process that didn't make the show, but we still keep in contact. Um, one of my big things I like to do in my free time is I play Xbox. So there's like four of my buddies that are on the show that we all play together at least like once a week um a lot of them will we'll facetime i've actually written with some of them like we'll like have co-writes now with like zoom and facetime and stuff it makes it a lot easier um but yeah we, we're doing that we're all supporting each other's music and i've played a couple shows i went to um one of my teammates was uh whitney fenimore she's from tulsa oklahoma we actually another teammate of mine and I, we actually flew out to Tulsa and did a homecoming show with her. So we, pl I played in there. I've played, uh, I was supposed to go to, um, Baton Rouge, Louisiana to play with another one of my teammates. Um, but that's gonna, that'll happen probably after this is all over. But, um, yeah, you know, it's, it, it's cool. You make connections and it's, it's friendships that it, it's a weird thing, um, to just kind of be expected to this whole life changing moment. And you're going through this whole process with, like you said, 90 other hopefuls. Um, but you, you guys get real close real fast. And like I said, yeah, some of them came to my wedding and they've been, they've turned into lifelong friends and it's, it's a, uh, it's a really cool experience that I forget is not normal to most people. So I try to like normalize it, but it's not. So, <laughs> <laughs> so has your music, um, has your perception of like the music industry changed since you've been on the show? Uh, as opposed to like before being on the show, like you have this grandiose, I, I know, like from, you know, being younger and, and now getting older and still being a musician, but you know, your, your chorus and your, your journey will change you a little bit and um, your perspective on things and maybe, you know, being famous isn't the primary, you know, focal point of your life anymore, or maybe it still is. I mean, do you still feel like you're carrying a part of old Gary with you and do you still hope for that record deal and, you know, to, to be in lights or would you rather be a little bit more behind the scenes and co-writing and, and being just a songwriter focusing on songwriting? Sure. That's a great question. Um, I honestly, I don't think any of us as musicians would hate the name and lights and up on stage and whatnot. Um, I mean, nobody's going to say no to that. I don't think, right. but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing it necessarily for a record deal. My ultimate goal, um, which this pandemic kind of blew a hole in it right now is, um, I really want to go on a tour. Like before we decide, my wife and I decide to like, you know, start a family, excuse me, do all that stuff. So, um, once this is over, um, my manager and I are going to try to plan like, a. um, a, uh, a at least an east coast tour get far up and as far down as possible and just because the thing is my, my favorite quote i've ever heard by my dear friend john mcconnell is if you want to go you gotta go you just gotta go do it so nobody's gonna as, as much as i hate to say it and this is hard for some people to hear nobody's gonna come and find you in central new york like you have to put yourself out there that's that's what the thing is is i never thought in a million years um I'd end up on a TV show, but I took the chance and I put it out on the internet. I, I sent those emails and I, you know, stuff like that. Like you, you've got to put in the, the, the legwork like, like you do. I mean, I see all your videos all the time and you're constantly promoting stuff and it's, it's awesome. And that's what you have to do. Um, so other people don't want to do the dirty work. They don't want to get behind the scenes and do that kind of stuff. Um, now if you're in it for the money, then yeah, songwriting is the way to go. Songwriting is where all the money is. Um, again with zoom and that kind of stuff you can definitely 
make it anywhere, but I know people that have moved to Nashville just for songwriting. There's people that have moved to LA for songwriting. And again, you put your name on somebody's somebody's song and you get you're getting royalties from it you're getting a check from it like that's that's where the money's at uh performing i mean that's where i feel the most alive i feel like that's the the old gary has never died in that part where he i I, i've always wanted to be on stage in front of people and um you know my next my next big step is i really want to get a band so i can go on the road and just start doing that but um yeah i i don't i don't think us as musicians it ever dies but i also don't think being famous isn't a necessity because there's so much more to so much more to being a musician and spreading your message than being famous. Sure, I, I agree. Um, so, can you? So today's theme is mindfulness, and you know these are obviously you know we're affected musically. Like you're not, I know you're doing spending a lot of time being around locally, and you know we're all put out of work at the moment. How do you keep yourself mentally in check? during this period of time sure um so i'm actually one of the fortunate ones i work my day job is at a bank so i'm actually still working um but it's so that's been helping helping a little bit instead of being cooped up you know in the walls um i'm also fortunate because my wife is a mental health counselor so um Uh. (laughs) so when you asked me to do this episode i saw who we were doing it with i was like oh yeah my wife's gonna love that so um yeah um so she's helped me out a lot, but it's um, one thing that I, I do a lot is uh, in the morning or even before I go to bed, I, I try to write as much as possible. Just get your like dump your thoughts out, negative, positive, whatever, put it on paper and then just forget it. Like just just let it be because, um, you know, our, our worst enemy is six inches right here. You know, so that's what it is. And it's it's it, you can send yourself down a real bad, real bad spiral real dark hole doing that. So um, I try to write as much as possible. I've been writing, obviously, music a bunch. Uh, I go for a lot of walks. I've also been trying to run. Um, One big hobby I found over the last two years is um, I play disc golf. So it's like, you know, there's a couple of courses up in Rochester and stuff and a lot around here, but it's nice just to be outside. Um, So it's just getting some physical activity and also just being kind of like just centering yourself and just getting away from all the chaos. Because the cool thing with that is a lot of the holes are in the woods. So you're like trying to navigate that and you're just, you don't hear anything. You just block it all out. Um, And I find that that's like the most time, most beneficial time for me to like kind of center in everything and just, you know, slow everything down. Because you're right, this, this stuff, people out of work and, you know, Social media is not helping a lot of people. Yeah. It's just, it's, um, it's a weird time, but the best thing you can do is just make time for yourself. I actually released a song called Time For Me with my uh, producer, Steve Brown, at Subcat Studios in Syracuse. It, we wrote it before all of this stuff started about like making more time for yourself. Like, the world's going too fast. You know, making more time to take naps or to, to eat right, to whatever. And then the pandemic hit. And we were like, oh, my God, this song is so relevant right now. We put it right <laughs> up. So it's, it's, it got a lot of, uh, a lot of viewers um, for, from the current time. So, uh, yeah, I think the best thing you can do is just kind of make time for yourself and really work on those passion projects and take time to, you know, fulfill yourself instead of looking at all the negatives during this time. Absolutely. I, I don't think um, anybody could have said it better. Maybe Christina can, but yeah. <laughs> or your wife. But uh, thank you for, for sharing yourself with us today. Um, we're going to hear more from Gary Carpentier at the end of the show. He's going to play one more song for us. Gary, where could uh, our audience be directed to your music? Yeah, awesome. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Gary Carpentier Music. Um, so my last name is like Carpenter, but there's an I after the T. My parents thought they were cool. I don't know. Uh, so you can find me on there. Uh, Gary Carpentier Music on Instagram. Uh, same with Twitter. It's all the same across the board. So um, I don't use Twitter a whole lot. I probably should, but Facebook, Instagram, that's where you find me a lot. I'll do, I do covers. I do originals. I'm always posting awkward selfies so it's a good time i love it thanks gary so hang tight we're going to bring you back a little bit later 
And um, in the meantime, I just wanted to, so one of the special things we have going for us in our second season here is we've picked up some really amazing sponsors. Um, if you are looking for any assistance with credit cards or accepting payments for your business, Electronic Merchant Systems is where you wanna go. It's old fashioned local service with amazing national support. We also had Untamed Events, uh, MissRebeccaDodge.com is where you could contact Rebecca. She is still taking appointments and assisting clients, former clients, and taking on new clients during the pandemic and helping them sort through this, this mess of a world that we have at the moment. And I just want to say a big shout out to the Jewish Senior Living uh, Jewish Home of Rochester, to all those residents tuning in right now. Hello, I miss you, and thank you for tuning in, and thank you so much for your support. So, with that being said, Miss Christina Mosgraver, how are you? I'm good, Amanda, how are you? I'm awesome, thank you so much for being a part of this. You know, I, this is such an important topic, um, especially during this time, you know, like everybody is struggling in some some way shape or form you know and as positive as i try to keep myself you know it's I'm, i'd be lying if i say I, I don't even get depressed once in a while mm -hmm. um how can you tell us a little bit about nami rochester and the program that you give mm -hmm. so i just thank you so much i so appreciate you having me on the show it's so awesome to get your invite so NAMI Rochester, we're a small grassroots mental health organization, um, small but mighty, we like to say. And so we offer, when the world is open, we offer signature programs, which are classes about mental health and supporting someone living with a mental health condition. There are support groups. There's all kinds of really great community offerings, programs in schools. And what we're really proud of right now is we've been able, because we're a small grassroots agency, we've been able to pivot really quickly and to be able to offer a lot of things online. So our peer support group is still running online. We're running some cool um, mindfulness and wellness and connection opportunities and our family support group as well. So now that we, we know that we're in this moment for a little bit longer than I think we all expected in March when we had to move quickly, we're looking at ways we're gonna sustain that as well because we're here to support the community. And so we want people to know that we're, our doors may be closed physically, but we're still here for everybody. So a lot of your, your meetings are, are you conducting through, through Zoom? Everything. Like we yeah. are, yeah, everything? Yep, everything's on Zoom. Do you feel the need for more support at this time? Are, are you taking on like, a whopping of new clients now that you know the pandemic has hit and you know people are experiencing those struggles with between lost income and you know the isolation I, I would imagine it would but I'm sure you know the answer to that yeah that's a really great question and um, so I just one thing too I want to just be sure to clarify too is that we're not a clinical service we're kind of like a really nice complement to clinical services so the people who come to us are really um, Again, family members and peers seeking out that support. And one thing that we really have seen is an uptick in people talking about mental health because we do all have it, right? And it's always been so, you know, kind of taboo to talk about historically because of the stigma that's affiliated with it. And this is a moment in time that has really leveled the playing field for all of us in so many different ways. And everyone in some capacity is having a mental health struggle, whatever that looks like. And so we've definitely seen a lot of people reaching out both just to talk more about mental health and how to support their loved ones or how to support each other. And we've also seen people who you know, have loved ones who had diagnoses that are, are struggling more um, because we know that, you know, especially with mental health, isolation can be one of the factors that can really make mental health struggles worse. And unfortunately we were in a moment in time where a certain degree of isolation is, is kind of inevitable. And so that's why, again, we're just so grateful we could move quickly to meet people where they're at and still offer programming. Great, so, you know, one of the things that I, I really wanted to focus on is, I, I feel like every single one of us probably knows somebody mm -hmm. that has struggled with mental illness or uh, in some shape or form. And how do we make those conversations and a little bit easier, how do we coexist a little bit more efficiently is really my question to you. I mean, 
there's for I know like uh, you never it's like walking on eggshells sometimes with people because you, you know like I I know I'm speaking from my own experiences you know like it you sometimes like it, we want to preach you know like <laughs> keep away from the negativity and you know bring in positive people in your life but some people can't help what they feel you know and how do we how do we better understand that you know mental illness and this this need for for a little bit, I, I don't want to say, I feel like attention is the wrong word. I'm, I'm just saying all the wrong words right now. But, you know, like, how do we just better coexist and understand the people around us a little bit better? Do you have any tips for that? Yeah. And I, I encourage you to be gentle on yourself. You didn't say all the wrong things. Your question was awesome. There was a lot of pieces there. And one thing that in the beginning of um, what you were asking, you know, you said how common it is for people to have mental health struggles. You're totally right. You know, this, the statistics are that one in four people live with a mental health condition. And if you think about it, three out of four people then become a coworker, a family member, a friend, a loved one. So mental health affects us all in, in all different kinds of ways. And to answer the other part, I would say that, you know, what really is important is empathy you know, having empathy for your fellow human being and understanding that, you know, especially again, in this moment in time, we're all struggling with really difficult things, whether it is, you know, a diagnosed illness or it's, it's a struggle based on what has happened in this world, being empathetic, non-judgmental, being genuinely just caring and reaching out. And one thing I always, always encourage people, and this is a, a core fundamental of NAMI education and support, but just something I've been fortunate to learn through my therapy and my work and all kinds of stuff is using I statements, not being judgmental and not saying, you know, not being attacking. Um, I can tell you for me, if somebody comes at me and they kind of attack, I immediately like shut down and it's over. There's no conversation. But if somebody was to say, Hey, I've noticed that, you know, you're, you're not getting dressed the way you usually would, you know, I'd love to, I'm concerned. I would love to talk about that more. I would much, I'd be much more apt. So just be really mindful of, of the way you say things to people, um, the way you come at people. And I, I know that one thing I, I kind of heard when you were asking the question is the walking on eggshells because we're always so afraid. I think we're always afraid as humans, we're gonna say the wrong thing, period, no matter yeah. what it is. In mental health, there's another level of vulnerability because you're exposing your vulnerability and they you know, have a vulnerability. And so it's bridging that gap. And so with empathy and with, you know, I statements and being compassionate, and empathetic, um, you can really bridge that gap. And, and just remember that, you know, we're all, we're all just humans doing the very best we can to get through these moments. How do you encourage someone who is, is clearly in, in need of some support, mm -hmm. but is extremely resistant to it? You know, they, they just want to shut themselves down and, and dig deeper in their hole. How do you encourage them or, um, try to, to get them to get that support and to reach out and, and to, you know, like ha, what, what's the right thing to do in that situation? I mean, there's people that obviously like, I, I, I don't think anybody wants to not care, right? If you see somebody obviously going through a struggle, right? But if they just are resistant of that, you know, it's, it's easy. I think most people will just throw their hands up and, and be like, I tried, you know, I don't know what else I could do. What do we do in that situation? you just keep trying. Um, I, you know, I have the, <laughs> the, the fortune, I guess, uh, if you will, of living through this myself. And I can say that, you know, I shut people out because I was scared. I was scared of what they would think and that they wouldn't love me and just a whole host of reasons. And really a lot of that comes back to the fact that historically mental health has not been, you know, kind of acceptable to talk about. Um, I, you know, again, I thought people wouldn't love me when I was younger. I thought people wouldn't want to be my teammate anymore if they knew what I was thinking and just being again, you know, that empathy and that love and compassion. And it doesn't have to be, you know, I had a friend when I was struggling and I'd shut everybody out and I just, you know, I, I didn't even have the strength in me to respond, but she would just send me, you know, little quotes or like little pictures that she knew, you know, things I love. I love sunflowers. And I will never forget that. And I, I knew she cared, you know, and so it doesn't even have to be a big conversation. It could, again, just be reaching out, letting them know you're always going to be there. It's a difficult conversation. It's a difficult place to be in because we want people to get help, right? We want them to feel better. We want to love them and care about them and have them get the help that they need. But it can be a really difficult road and journey. 
So I encourage you just keep loving them. And sometimes it's love from a distance and also get support for yourself. Because if you're trying to support someone, get them, you know, getting help or getting them into treatment or whatever it is, that's going to take a toll on you too. So be sure that you're reaching out for help and for support. Um, because it, sometimes we don't realize how much of a toll things take until they get overwhelming. So I encourage anybody to, you know, from, from the giddy up, right. From out of the gate, know that you're going to need support in this journey too, if you're going to be helping somebody get help. Awesome. So mindfulness is our topic and I kind of stole it from you, to be honest. <laughs> we were talking on the phone. I was like, well, it was one of the topics I already had. I was like, all right, well, that definitely applies. So let's, let's run with that. But um, I know it's something that you practice regularly with your, with your group. And um, is there, is there um, something that you could maybe lead us through today? Like that's brief and yeah. an exercise that we could all practice on our own. Yeah, for sure. Um, why don't we just rock through a quick stop meditation, if that sounds good. Um, awesome. This is something I have found. I, I found when I was trying to do mindfulness and meditation, my mind would just race. And so I got frustrated with myself because I wasn't being gentle on myself. But your mind racing is okay. I learned that. So with a stop meditation, let's all just do it together right quick. So I'm just going to encourage you to sit. That's the S. So just sit, stop, pause if you want to take a breath. If you want to close your eyes, whatever. So that's the S. So think of you're stopping, you're pausing. Then the T is you're going to take a conscious breath. So you're going to just breathe in and breathe out. Whatever that feels like to you, it might, you know, your breathing might change. It might get a little deeper. It might just stay the same. But just be aware of your breath. So we're stopped in this moment. We're taking our breath. And then we're just going to observe. So observe what's happening with your senses, how your body feels, what you're hearing. You might have thoughts that start coming into your head. And if they do, that's okay. Just let them be or let them go out. Don't judge them. Just let them be. So we're stopped. We're taking our conscious breath. We're observing. And now with all of that together, with our P, we're gonna proceed with purpose. And the most important thing when we're ready to proceed with purpose is anchoring it in self-compassion and self-love and empathy. And just being ready, just think of it, you're rolling out the carpet, you're proceeding, you're ready to roll out the carpet for anything that could be difficult or positive and with your tools, you're going to proceed with purpose and, and navigate through this moment, whether it's the next minute or five or week or day, just prepare yourself to take good care of yourself and love yourself and be gentle and proceed with purpose. Something I really love about this, and I'm so glad you asked about this, is this is something you can do really quickly. So if you just need to go through the STOP quick, Maybe it's, you know, you're in a tough situation with a conversation. You can just go through, okay, I got to stop, take my breath, observe, and then proceed. You can use it quickly or you can just sit in it. Um, I found myself sitting in it for quite a while because you might want to spend a lot of time observing and then moving forward. So however it works for you, and there's lots of great things. Um, if, you know, this isn't the one for you, don't give up. Find what works for you. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Great. So what's upcoming for NAMI? What, what do you guys, you have some events, I believe, on the yeah. rise? So our biggest fundraiser is the NAMI Walks Rochester, which typically a huge event. You know, we get together at Village Gate, we walk, we have all kinds of really cool drum circle and, and volunteers and face painters and just, it's awesome. And we hope 2021, we will be back rocking on. But we've put together this amazing day. We have this incredible new um, development marketing manager who has taken over this walk and working really hard to put together. It's called NAMI Walks Your Way. It's May 30th and it's it's a day of hope. So all of the walks nationally have kind of gotten together and created this national movement. So all day long, we're gonna be doing activities and your way. Um, so we'll be doing some stuff on Zoom and Facebook Live and we're encouraging people to make it whatever it is for you. Maybe it's you do walk, um, it's usually a mile and a half-ish. 
maybe you go for the walk or maybe I'm actually planning to have, I have a big backyard. So I'm, I'm planning on a barbecue. I think I'll charge admission because it is a fundraiser, um, sure. but I'm planning on, you know, having people because my yard's so big, we can stay like far away. So if you want to get involved, we'd love you to get involved. Um, learn more about NAMI. You can visit namirock.org, which is N-A-M-I-R-O-C.org. And there's a link right on there to get you to the walk page. So you can get your team set up, you can register, you can donate. Um, you can find out about all our groups and all the other things we have because we work really hard to keep that updated. So yeah, namirock.org is like your one-stop shop to, to connect with us. Awesome, Christina, Club Soda Cheers. Thank you so much for lending your uh, advice and your knowledge to us, to our show. It's really so important to uh, have these discussions and I appreciate you sharing this on our, our first episode. Yeah, it was awesome. awesome. So glad. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, Gary, you ready to rock out one more? Yeah, girl. Let's do it. Let's do it. What do you got for us? So this one I've actually written in quarantine. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> never played it ever for any other human being, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I don't have a name for it yet, but we'll figure it out. Right. Okay. Maybe we could help you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's an East Coast girl with a West Coast heart. Trade that city life. A fresh start Let the winds move you Like I never could Go and spread your wings I'll grab the firewood And we'll burn, burn, burn The fire inside Let it run, run, run So we can fly Let's jump off the edge and leave it all behind Grab your keys, drive to the sunrise and ride
Gary, great song. Gary, tell us one more time where we can find your music. Yeah, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Gary Carpentier Music, same as Instagram, same thing. Uh, you can find me on iTunes as well or Spotify, uh, Gary Carpentier. Um, got a bunch of stuff on there, so go check it out. Go download Gary's music now or after the show. Gary, thank you so much. Christina, thank you so much. You guys, for please keep beautiful and continue sharing that inspiration. And um, I, you know, this this pandemic has really brought so much into perspective for myself. Um, but beyond myself, you know, it's it's had an effect on everybody in so many different ways. The most important thing is to take care of yourself. You know, if you realize you're in a slump reach out to those people that, that mean something to you. You know, the fortunate thing that we have in this situation is that we have platforms to use such as Zoom and, and various other platforms where we could still keep connected and um, be in check with our loved ones and, and still feel that support even though we're not physically present in the same room. I wanna give you all 10 practical ways that I found and a few of them we've kind of already covered with both Christina and Gary, but just to reiterate what's important to tell, take care of your wellness and to make your wellness a priority at this time. Number one, talk about your feelings. Talk about your feelings can help you to stay in good mental health and deal with times when you feel troubled. Number two, keep active. Regular exercise can boost your self-esteem and can help you concentrate, sleep, and even feel better. Number three, eat well. I know that's the hardest thing right now. We're all gorging our faces and, and it's easy to be a slob right now. But um, even being a little bit more conscious of what we're putting in our mouths, you know, your brain needs a mix of nutrients in order to keep healthy and to function well. So just like, just like the other organs in your body, a diet that's good for your physical health is also good for your mental health. Number four, drink sensibly. Another thing that's, you know, a little bit difficult to do right now. A lot of people are, are turning towards alcohol to, you know, mitigate some of these negative feelings. We often drink alcohol to change our mood. Some people drink to deal with fear or loneliness, but the effect is only temporary. When the drink wears off, you feel worse because of the way that alcohol has affected your brain and the rest of your body. Drink in moderation. Number five, keep in touch. There's nothing better than catching up with someone face to face, but there's, that's not always a possibility. You can always give somebody a call, drop them a note, uh, chat with them online, keep the lines of communication open because it's, it's good for your soul. Number six, ask for help. None of us are superheroes. We all sometimes get tired or overwhelmed by how we feel when things don't go as planned. If things are becoming too much for you and you f just feel like you can't cope, ask for that help. There's somebody that loves you. Ask them for that help. Reach out to them. Number seven, take a break. A change of scene or a change of pace is always good for your mental health. It could be a five minute pause from cleaning your kitchen, a half hour lunch break at work, or a weekend exploring some, some place and somewhere new. A few minutes can be enough to de-stress you, so give yourself some me time. Number eight, do something you're good at. Something that makes you feel good, makes you feel confident. What do you love to do? Ask yourself that. Right now you have the time to, to do whatever you want. Nobody's judging you. Go crochet, go pick up that dusty guitar in the corner, you know, whatever. Go play Xbox games. I've been doing a lot of that too, Gary. So whatever you enjoy doing, take that time out for yourself to beat that stress and to just do an activity that means something to you. Nine, accept who you are. We're all different. It's much healthier to accept that you're unique than to wish that you were like someone else. Feeling good about yourself boosts your confidence to learn new skills, visit new places, to make new friends. Good self-esteem helps you cope when life takes a difficult turn. And last but not least, number 10, and Christina brought this up, care for others. Friends are really important. We can help each other whenever we can, so it's a two-way street and supporting them is what will uplift them. Finally, keep in mind that ex experiencing stress and negative emotions can have positive consequences. Difficult life experiences help us to adapt and gain a new appreciation for life. They help us to build a stronger sense of resilience, which in turn affects our growth and allows us to live more fully and purposefully. The little TLC and planning, we too can grow and keep psychologically strong 
throughout this transformative experience. I wish you all a beautiful Monday. We will be back here this Wednesday. Thank you so much to our sponsors again, EMS, Untamed Events, Ms. Rebecca Dodge, and to the Jewish, Jewish Senior Living, Jewish Home of Rochester. Thank you so much. And to all our Patreon supporters that helped make this second season of shows even possible. If you would like to sponsor our show as well, or to just give us a little boost, um, patreon.com slash afternoon cocktail talk show is where you can do that. And uh, we look forward to seeing you this Wednesday. Thank you again. Shout out to Boya Productions for making our set amazing. We will see you guys Wednesday. Adios. <laughs>